So a weird thing kind of happened to me last night. I woke up this morning and had an email from Facebook and it said that at 1.45 a.m. somebody requested to change my password. Now, this is not something that is probably foreign to most of us in the cybersecurity network, in the MSP channel, in cyber insurance areas. Obviously, people are trying to uh, steal our credentials, use our accounts, spoof our accounts, pretend to be us in order to get other people to, in order to scam other people. Um, this is not news, but it does hit close to home. And it got me thinking that this is a teachable moment um, because one, who uses Facebook anymore? And I apologize if you do, but I don't think I log into Facebook for anything other than using the marketplace at this point. Um, now, that said, that's probably a great avenue for scammers because every time you list something, you get about 50 immediate posts or messages from people saying, hey, would you deliver it? My friend can pick it up or something random like that where uh, do you take PayPal? I'll pay you 20 extra dollars for shipping or weird things like that, right? So clearly scams all over Facebook Marketplace. But this is Facebook as a whole. And it's a teachable moment for us because there are a couple of things. One, as an MSP or as a business, if you're listening to this, if you're not, if you're not an MSP or if you are an MSP, at the end of the day, there are chances that there are, uh, we call them legacy accounts, but really obsolete, outdated software platforms or just subscriptions or accounts that you do not use anymore. Think about it. I mean, every website you go to today, if you just want to access something on their platform, they say, hey, you need to create an account. Like how many accounts do you have out there that you've created one time to use to, to buy something from one specialty shop or use uh, just just to learn about that software a little bit more? Like how many of those accounts exist out there? How many of those accounts are store accounts where you um, bought something and then didn't uncheck that box that said save this payment information. So now your credit card is just sitting in there. There are so many accounts out there that we probably created with using our standard email, maybe created using our standard password because we weren't using password managers at the time. Um, and they're a pretty, and we probably don't have MFA or 2FA enabled on any of these. So it's a pretty easy entry point for a lot of criminals to either get your card information or pretend to be you. Fortunately, with Facebook, there are some pretty significant uh, security measures you can take to lock down your account. And here's the issue, though. They don't force those on you. They suggest them, but they don't tell you you have to use 2FA. Um, they also just let you use whatever you want as a password. And you can use your phone number as your login. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there to try and get in to your account. Um, and... So this just, this just brings to mind a couple of things, right? Password hygiene is really important. So you might rotate your passwords, maybe you use a password manager where you don't know what a single one of your passwords is because it's some string of 25 random characters for every single account you have, they're all different. Um, great, right? There's just better ways that we can be securing ourselves. Maybe you're using a pass key, using some of that newer technology. There are better ways to secure our accounts than the old tried and true singular pa single password that we use for every account, right? So. Maybe, maybe do a little, so that's that's the first thing, diversifying passwords, having better password hygiene across the board, longer passwords, more diversified, all that good stuff. The other thing is these old accounts. So when I started at Fifth Wall in their agency channel, I was working with getting a company, a policy, and you know they, they did a lot to get the right security in place, but something showed up on a, on a scan that made the carrier nervous. And that was that this company was using what's called Lotus, 321. I think it's Lotus 321 or 123. It's 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 such an old software. I don't even remember what it is, but it was this software that kind of predated Excel, right? And it was still on their network. So it had some serious CVE vulnerabilities and it was in a place where it, it was it was out of date. I mean, it wasn't being patched anymore. There were no updates. So it was just a software software sitting on their network that was just basically saying, hey, hackers, take shot at us, right? Um, so thinking about some of those outdated or legacy softwares that you use that might not that, that might be end of life now, so there's no there's no support. Um, you really shouldn't be using those on your network. I mean, that's it, right? I mean, I have family and friends. I'm sure you have family and friends. You might even be one of these people who has a, a phone that no longer gets security updates, right? And there are workarounds. If you're really techy and savvy, you can you know use 
background software in order to add future security updates or current security updates to an older phone. Yes, that's possible. But the reality is the average user doesn't know how to do those things. So we as MSPs, if you're listening in here, take note, make sure your clients have good passwords. Uh, make sure those passwords are not all the same across the board and check to see if there's any end of life software or account that they might be using as a business, because that is an entry point. Um, and you probably know all this, right? But Here's the other piece from the insurance perspective, right? It can be hard. I mean, I can't even think of how many accounts I have created in the past on a personal level. And to even think about that on the business level now, um, back before they had IT, back before they had some, or before they had a cybersecurity expert coming in and actually advising them on their security, how many accounts did they create? How many accounts did they let their employees create that they just use for things? We need to be doing our due diligence and making sure they don't have them. But if we do happen to miss one, here's the hope that your client has a good insurance policy that's actually going to cover them from something like invoice manipulation, um, something like uh, just credential credential fraud, uh, just, just coverages that are gonna help those cybercrime incidents when someone does get in. Um, we wanna make sure they're secured because no one's perfect, but we need to be doing our due diligence just to make sure that we are scrubbing those machines of old accounts that are no longer uh, active um, end of life software, all that good stuff. And then for the stuff that is active, make sure those passwords are being rotated or if even better, completely randomized or use a pass key or something like that. So that's the announcement I have for today. Just wanted to share that little story because at the end of the day, it, it hits close to home that when you wake up to an alert that someone tried to get into your Facebook, um, chances are it might be time to change your password. So this is Will Brooks, Fifth Wall Solutions, signing off. Talk to you later.